Hey there, welcome to the first episode of Story Manifesto's Fable, A Great Darkness Love. On this channel, we give you videos on writing pep talks, writing mindset advice, and all things storytelling every Tuesday and Thursday. I'm Leah Falls, writer, actor, and mindset coach, and I'm here with my lovely wife. Mm. Mia Luna Falls, poet, writer, and DM extraordinaire. So now, it's an 18. We can get started. I think we can get started. Let's go. Once upon a time, a thousand years ago, there was a land covered with strife. Kingdoms fought. Wars happened. Moment of strife! Keep going. Sorry. <laughs> and then something strange happened. It may not seem strange to a normal fantasy type setting, but it was strange in this regard. Three great evils rose to take the land. A great lich, powerful and uncaring. A dragon tyrant, furious and greedy. And lastly, a demon from the depths of the nine hells rose up to take their land on the surface. Not the surface, that's my favorite place! And that's when the odd things began to happen. All three evils succeeded and united, agreeing that all three of them should get a third of the land to themselves to rule. And... As hero after hero failed to stop the evil, a thousand years of darkness settled over the land. But not darkness as you'd expect. It was full of peace, wonder, and happiness. The dragon used its vast hordes to start social programs ran by hordes of kobolds who could do the paperwork. The necromancers and the lich that led them raised the dead to handle all casual manual labor so that People were free to do art and pursue the sciences. And the demon? Well, it turns out they weren't so much for punishment. They were more for reform and helping people do better. So the programs in the Nine Hells justice system eventually brought peace to that land as criminals were reformed, not punished, but actually led to better lives and given positions that would help them do better for themselves. And those thousand years of darkness were a thousand years of peace. Unfortunately, something terrible happened. On the anniversary of the foundation of the three great nations, a dragon-born paladin marched into necromatic lands and slew the great lich. No! The lands have been thrown into war as the necromancers struggled to try and maintain things what with half the undead population wiped out by the loss of the lich, and that war that country was thrown into complete chaos. And in order to find its modicum of justice, they've gone to war with the dragon's nation. A great war has set out upon all three of them. The demon kingdom of Circle Knoll still has peace as they've declared themselves a sovereign nation and staying out of it, neutral. As such, they found that they could, hopefully, make a little money, keep it calm, not cause any issues. But we'll have to find out how that goes. We settle in... Fourteen. The war goes well. All peaceful. All good. Well done. Good. I hope you enjoyed this episode of... Maybe we should continue? Yes, let's Just continue. A little bit, yeah. We descend upon the city of Bedlam, the capital of the Demon Empire. Circle Knoll, if you will. And as we descend onto the city of obsidian spikes and spires, Ooh. designed to look like the deepest depths of hell, but, you know, more comfortable and with a better mail system. With less fire? Less fire. Less fire, okay. We slowly sure? descend... It does feel pretty warm in here. <laughs> <laughs> we slowly descend upon the Liberal Arts College, the main university of Bedlam, into the dorm rooms, Built into an obsidian spire, we ascend in as we peek through one of the glass windows that overlook the city to our dear... Galia. I sitting. also forgot my last name. Galia Tajir. Tajir, yes. Galia Tajir. Sitting on her bed and preparing for a trip after reading over a horrid note that she had received. 
should I introduce Galia first? Yes, you should. So this was Galia before the horrid note. Eighteen. No, actually she's twenty-three. <laughs> um. So Galia Tashir is currently a or was a lute and music student at the Bedlam University. Correct. Uh, her dream is to become an improv lute player because, see, the thing is, she she used to have some trouble um, speaking and her dad taught her how to speak while playing the lute. So now she really loves, just she, she carries her lute everywhere. She uh, has come into the habit of just providing a bit of a score to anyone's conversation. Some they say it's cute. Some say it's annoying. Those people are wrong. Very uh, wrong. Very wrong. It's a DM rule. They're wrong. <laughs> um, and her dream is, because she really likes the theater and she loves creepy, dark, scary things, and so maybe everything's going to be fun. <laughs> she might enjoy it more than most people. Yes. Well, I, I imagine in um, the Spiral Demon City, there's a good chunk of dark, creepy playhouses. Actually, they really enjoy vaudeville there. Well, then those few gothic playhouses. Come on, there's some, right? Of course, plenty. Oh, okay, yes. It's a big city, metropolitan. <laughs> she really wants to uh, play in one of those and improvise to the shows. Unfortunately, most directors want, like, pre-written music, and she's not about that, so she has had trouble getting a bit of a foot in that whole world. Um, or a loot. She's, oh, yes, we're playing D&D, so she's a changeling, which I should have probably mentioned first. She's a changeling bard. Um, she has mossy leaf hair, so it's not this, it's leaves. Use actually, your imagination. I actually would like to take a moment here to address the D&D fans in the world. We're using D&D more as a framework than specifically following the exact rules of D&D. And that especially comes to when it comes down to combat. I'm going to be playing very fast and loose with things when things get aggressive. Yes. So if you I'm want to roll correct it. us, you enjoy that. I'll probably ignore it. Um, antlers. She also has antlers. Uh, she has gray green skin, which I tried. Um, and she is quite tall, uh, over about six foot five, and it is because. She is half, she's cha a changeling, she's half fae and half ant. A little bit of background to the Toshi family. Um, she's got two dads. She has one astrologist, uh, mathematician dad, who is the ant. Uh, I have such a hard word saying that word. I keep thinking I'm saying ant, and then it's like a big size difference. But anyway. Um, giant tree person. Yes, giant tree person, Chandabal who is an astrologer, he, he doesn't, he's non-verbal, he uh, studies most of the time, he doesn't like to move around too much. Um, and her other dad, Ekbal, who is a, oh my goodness, Eric if Cochran. I can, thank you, third person. Uh, I have played D&D &D before, I just don't work. Actually quite regularly, we've had yes. a campaign going on for about two years. Time. He's a bird person, Akbal, so it's Shandabal and Akbal. The two met. It's a very cute story. I wrote like two pages of backstory on it because, you know, why not? Real quick version, Shandabal was walking through the forest, looking at the stars, trying to find the secrets of the universe, and fell off a cliff. So he fell off a cliff and fell onto the side of the ocean. A storm was coming. It was real bad. But then Akbal, who was just, you know, bird senses flying away from the ocean, saw him there and gave him company and uh, also made sure he was safe. He built a bit of a cave around him, got help. And that's how the two of them fell in love. So uh, that's, that's the story of Galia's parents. Um, she 17. Had, it's romantic. It is romantic. I hope you're swooning. Um, she had a surrogate mother, but uh, the surrogate mother doesn't live in the village or anything. And uh, yeah, that's 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 Galia. Um, that's Galia. That's Galia. I mean, there's other stuff, but I probably we'll won't. find that out in time. Don't yes. worry. So we descend in through the window to find her sitting on the bed oh, reading yeah. a letter. Oh yeah, horrid note. That was Galia. Oh no. <laughs> a letter written to her by her. <laughs> if anyone plays the loot, I'm very sorry about what I'm doing. Feel free to send us your loot music. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. A letter written to her by her best friend, 
uh, Tesrian, mm -hmm. that reads as follows. I'm so sorry. Stop. Wait, that's telegrams. That does not work. I thought they had a great mail system. <laughs> they do. Inconsistency! Eight! It is inconsistent, officially. That's really not how rolling works. No. Dear Galia, I am so sorry to tell you this. I am so sorry. Um, we haven't seen your dad since his last trip, and he was supposed to be back a week ago. Ekwal is gone. And... Gone. That is a terrible phrasing. And that is very alarming. Why would she use such alarming phrasing? And she, Chan doesn't know what's going on. He's freaking out. I need you to come back so we can figure something out. Oh, shit. Okay. That is very alarming. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Tessarian. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, I read over the letter three times, uh, roll it up, put it in my pouch, and um, my roommate. I had. I have a roommate, Albans, who is a. Oh yes, yes. Sorry. Goliath. He's a Goliath. He sees you panicking and nervous and looks over. Yes, I start strumming the loop very quickly while I'm also trying to pack. He looks over. Do you need some help panic pa packing? Very good on panicking. Packing would be good. Can you get the things from the bathroom? I'm going home immediately. Do you want to come? It's a very nice village. I've been telling you. You don't want to leave, do you? Uh, not really. Could you actually use my help in any way? As he's saying this, he's walking off to the bedroom, bathroom and starting to collect items, folding them very neatly and placing them down on a pile so that they pack very easily. Thank you. Thank you, Albans. Well, my dad is missing. My dad is missing. Oh, we we should tell the demon guard. Mm, no, my they know in my hometown they know. Oh. Tezrian, Tezrian is the well, demon guard, right? Tezrian is the ambassador for the demon guards. She's a tiefling, if you know what that is. It's basically a half demon that helps talk to people so that the demons don't have to. Okay. Well, um, yeah, they already know. I'm pretty sure they already know. He's on a business trip. You know, sometimes business trips go go long. Read this letter. This letter is written so poorly. I'm sure. I'm he sure it's an exaggeration. He takes it from you and kind of. It's an exaggeration. I'm sure it's an exaggeration. Sounds like an exaggeration. And he folds up and puts down. Good. Well, then are you sure you want to go? If the demon guard knows and it's an exaggeration, I mean, I've what's been, the worst that could happen? I've been meaning to see my parents anyway. Yeah. It's actually just more of a family trip. That's what it is. We're going on a family trip. It's a family trip. It's a it's a family visit at home. We're tripping at home. Have a drink of water. Okay. And he goes over and pours a glass of water from a very particular pitcher. It's your pitcher of water, if it were. Because it's not just water. It's water with, like, some actual, like, minerals and rocks and stuff uh. broken into it. It looks... To the viewers at home... It would look absolutely disgusting, but it's very, but it's very ant love, you know? Yes, yes. Well, it's I, soily. So, so soiled. Soiled. Ah, so, soiled. <laughs> Dirty girl. <laughs> Roll for kink. No. 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 Um, well, if I, I do want to go. If you're available, Albans, maybe, you know, if it's not, if the trip extends and there's, there's where's my loot? There's things in the trip you you would you would come join, right? If I can help, happily. Okay. Okay. But I know you're busy with studying. J just let me know. Send me a letter and I'll be there. Okay. All and right. he settles back onto his bed, which <laughs> underneath his weight, because big old Goliath. Oh. Yeah. And you head off. Does he have like a like an electric keyboard? I think he's a pianist. Not electric, but no. a magical keyboard. Magical, right. Electricity. <laughs> this is almost like steampunky setting time period, by the way. Like, there's gunpowder fantasy, if you know what that is. Ooh, nice. My favorite setting. 
You should make a book of Kindle Tales and Gunpowder Fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah crossover. Yeah, subtle plug. No, that one, not crossover. <laughs> so you head out and you charter the first um, carriage you can get back to your town. And the way carriage works, carriages work in Circle Knoll is it's basically an ornate mahogany, dark varnish carriage wagon type thing pulled by two demon horses which are smart and know where they're going so they can generally speaking take up to four or five people wherever needs to go and you load on without even noticing and just pack your bag sit down and it takes about five minutes before you realize there's somebody sitting across from you can can i pull out the harmonica as well yeah of course so i'm playing my harmonica now. and this person sitting across from you is completely ignoring you and she's sitting there with a bow sitting next to her, a small knife in her hand, whittling a wooden mask. A mask? A mask. It's basically expressionless, at least at this point, except for, like, two direct downward slits for the eyes, like, kind of snake eyes. Mm -hmm. And she has a red line painted from the center of her lip all the way down her chin. Nice. Her hair pulled back tight. Okay. Um, And she's just quietly whittling across from you. I want to start... Playing the harmonica in the, like, rhythm of her whittling. Okay. So she's... That's not how her harmonica It's more of a... (laughs) I'm also probably incredibly wrong. (laughs) And she briefly looks up at you and changes the pattern of her whittling for a second. And you follow suit and she kind of acknowledges it and smirks and then goes back to her whittling. The ride in general is about a probably 20 minute ride back to your main city because these carriages go fast do you want to address her in any other way before i think i want to tap her knee Mm -hmm. then i point at the mask and i go but i keep playing in the rhythm she looks at you looks down at the mask what is her name galia and up in the top corner we're like like right here for a mask she carves a very ornate calligraphed G and then goes back to her whittling. I start playing very beautiful music. Wonderful. She seems to be kind of getting into the mood, groove of it. Mm-hmm. And you arrive at the... You start pulling into your city, which is the city of Shol. Which is the city of Shol. It's surrounded by wildflower fields, as far as you can see, and it's a nice circle thing covered in chains. And as you pull in, you pull towards the center market, and what you can hear is just the loudest commotion you've ever heard. And that's where we leave it for today. What? Are you okay with this? I'm not okay with this. Tough. Give me more. No. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and comment below. Uh, what do you think is gonna happen next? Um, what do you think was the loud noise commotion? Commotion. Um, do you enjoy playing the lute? Just, just let us know. Let's talk about it because I really don't want to wait a week, but we all have to. Um, also, uh, share it with anyone who you think would enjoy it too. That would be awesome. Thank you so much. You can find us at Story Manifestos on Instagram or on storymanifestos.com. We post inspiring, uh, mostly mindset writing related content there. Um, you can also follow our personal Instagrams, which will appear here and here. Somewhere? Somewhere? <laughs> Yes, uh, and check out our website. We have a newsletter with more inspiring contests and uh, contacts and content. Content. Contents. And we also offer writing services such as manuscript critiques, sensitivity reads, character interviews, and a lot of other things. Go check it out. Uh, it's very fun. Um, yeah, I will also it. personally be down in the comments interacting with anyone who has thoughts or opinions about what just happened. Get the information out of her. Never. <laughs> Have a good week, everyone. Bye.